decks, we're hosting live sessions, but you're hitting a point where you want to be able to share content, not necessarily your screen, but you want to share content with your students that maybe you're drawing out somehow. So I've got some options. Some are easy, some are a little more technical. Um, take from this what you want and however you can use it. I hope it is somehow helpful for you. So let's dive into option number one. First way that you can share some work with your students, WebEx Whiteboard. It's built right into WebEx, so let's take a look at that. Um, I'm gonna jump into a WebEx session. I'm just gonna use a, a personal room for today just to, to be able to show you guys what this looks like. Okay, so I've got several students in my class and now I wanna start sharing a whiteboard with them. So in order to do that, I'm gonna start by clicking the share content button. That's the one at the bottom with the square and the up arrow on it. Uh, and when we come in here, you see what we would normally do to share a screen from our computer. But if we scroll down, uh, we can find there's uh, other options down here, and the best one is new whiteboard. So I'm going to share a new whiteboard, and uh, by default, it looks like I've got the eraser button selected. So I want to change that to a pencil. So if I come over here on the left-hand side, um, looks like a little pencil or a pen over here. I have the option between a pen and a pencil, and it really has to do with the thickness of the line. So I'm going to start with a pencil, and you can see that I can I can free draw here. So if I want to do 2 plus 2 equals 4, and I'm going to apologize, I have not been playing with my mouse very much, um, then I can do those kind of things. I can obviously do drawings. Um, I can change colors. I can go in to do shapes instead. So I can do squares and ovals and marks. Um, I can do lines that have arrows. Um, a couple other things that are neat here, though, is the arrow pointer. So with this one, I can either use the pointer where I can come in here and say, oh, hey guys, pay attention to this. Or I can use the laser pointer where anything I point to looks like I've got a laser that I'm pointing at it on the screen. All right, now that I've created this, I could clear all of my annotations. If I come over here to eraser, I can clear my pointers. I can clear all my annotations. So pointers would be anything with that arrow on it. Annotations is anything that I've drawn and I can continue going from there. Uh, finally, I can save this whiteboard. So if I want to save it for future use, I can come in here to the save button. It'll save my file and I can share that later with my kiddos. When I'm done using the whiteboard, I can just click up here at the top. I can hit the X. And do you want to save it? Again, you can save it here or I'm just going to say no, I don't need to save it right now. And then I'm back into my normal WebEx session. So that's option one. All right, option two works great if you already have a dry erase board or something like uh, those big post-it note panels or whatever. Just start up your meeting and make sure that in your, your WebEx and your webcam, you can see yourself and the dry erase board a little bit. Then you can start drawing whatever that you need to provide. You know, the student should be able to see it pretty good. Um, it's kind of hard to zoom in on WebEx, so the easiest thing is just move your laptop closer to what you're trying to draw, and then you can go from there. Option number three is what we're going to call the most technical way, but also the way that's probably going to look the smoothest when you're in a WebEx meeting with, the, with your students, and that is using another device. So as long as you've got a tablet or a smartphone um, that you can join the meeting with, you can use that as a sort of document camera and let your laptop be the main presentation machine. So let's take a look at, at how that would work. So for option three, what I've done is I've set up, uh, well, my, my kids have a whole stack of board games that we, we've been playing. Uh, you could also use a whole bunch of books, whatever you got handy. Uh, but I set them on a table. I've got some paper that I'm gonna work with here. But on top of these board games, I've got my phone. My cell phone is setting up here up top and then I'm holding that out there with yet another board game. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my phone into the WebEx meeting as another attendee. And then I can use the camera from that to actually share what I'm drawing underneath of it. So let's take a look at the settings I need to use on the phone itself. So real quick, before I go to the phone and the app that I'm gonna use on there, the first thing I need to know is my meeting ID number. And you should have that from the invite already. But if you don't, um, I'm already in this meeting here. If I go to meeting information, uh, there's this nine digit meeting number that I'm gonna write down because I'm going to need to access that from my phone in order to join um, the meeting from my phone. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna go over to my phone and I wanna open my WebEx app. So I've got WebEx Meet on here. I don't need to sign in. I can just join a meeting. Again, all I need 
is that meeting number. And I'm going to enter that now. And you can put in your name and your email address. I usually use a name that's different, just so that it's easier for me to see it inside of the WebEx meeting. It'll be easier to bounce back and forth. So I'm going to join that meeting that I've already got started. And I don't, I don't need audio or camera on, so I'm going to make sure that my mic is muted and that my, my webcam is off for now until I get my phone set. So I'm going to get my phone up here, and then I am going to click the webcam on, and you'll see you get some options. You can turn on dual camera. You don't need that in this case. Don't need a virtual background. That little squiggly box up here in the top, though, is going to be important. So that's going to change which camera you use, either the front casing or the front facing or the rear facing camera. You want the rear one based on how you're setting it up here on top of your books or your boxes. And then start my video. OK, next thing, now that I've got camera on the phone, um, I've got it joined into the meeting, all that kind of stuff. There's one last thing I need to do. I need the phone to be the presenter while I'm trying to draw. So I'm going to right click on my phone and change its role to presenter, not host, but presenter. Okay, so this one's a little bit hard to show you, but what I'm gonna do with my actual phone, right now it's thinking that it needs to be up and down, right? So I'm gonna take my phone and I'm gonna tilt it to one side so that it ends up rotating my phone so that it's in landscape mode instead of portrait. So now, I have my phone set up high enough that I can see everything on my screen, um, on my piece of paper, and I can draw my formulas, whatever I want to draw out. Everybody's going to be able to read what I'm trying to accomplish, and I can share my work as I'm trying to, to go through it. All right, so those are some really quick and basic options on setting up uh, some easy ways to share your work inside of a WebEx meeting. Hope this was helpful. If you have any other ideas or anything else you'd like to see me cover, please don't be afraid to reach out. Be sure to leave comments on my YouTube videos, like, uh, subscribe. Don't forget to take a look at any of the new videos that I have as they come out. I will see you again next time.